also sensitive. Might have a problem with that. Might have to go to battery at some point. I don't know. Finding in the site, but not the Google. It's like welcome to evil sports and speed and vision and light. That's how you can On the site, you can't find like it is the sucker flies or something. Usually, as I pan, I I also zoom back as I pan. You know, what I mean? that's a good shot. Dave, if you ever if you ever view the live feed, you have to turn the sound completely off. Otherwise, we get the feedback. Come on, come on, Jeff, let's go here. This is a direct camera light, so that's not the actual light. Dale, Dale, which one holds it? Like, if I wanted to let go, like right now, if it's starting to slide down, turn this, this one here. signal again, I might have to go to battery. Is it something in this cord? Alright, we're live on Friday morning. Loser bracket, first game. Combat. Sports is going to be in the white with gray pants. Looks like they're going to bat first. Home team's going to be prime time. Black shirts, gray pants on the field. The teams have had the toss. Prime time is the home team. So let's introduce their defensive alignment as they take the field. Their pitcher is Dennis Davison. His battery made his day. Alright, somebody give us some feedback, make sure you can hear the audio and the video on the feed, if anybody's out there this early in the morning. Combat leadoff man's Jeff McGavin. Combat dropped their first game, they lost to R&M. A little bit of an offensive outage for Combat in that game. Leading off for Team Combat, Jeff McEvan. Pitcher Dennis Davison for prime time. First pitch run away, ball inside. Catcher's David Moore, long-time primetime player. McGavin walks on three pitches. The off man of four as McGavin draws the walk. That brings up number 93, Scott Brown. Scotty Brown stands in. Brown missed half the season with a hamstring pull. He's their best header and then at the conference championship two weeks ago he showed up with a bad ball bladder and had to have emergency surgery at the hospital right here in Kissimmee. Missed the whole tournament. He's back, he says he's 100%. Brownie hits it high. Down the left field line. And they let it drop as that's a strikeout. You don't get a foul ball on the second. Brown is retired on strikes. That brings up number five, Casey Rogowski. Casey Rogowski is the catcher for Combat. Casey Rogowski. 
Casey Rogowski. Rogowski's second year in the conference. A lot of power for the left side. Gavin on first, and he hits it deep right field. Back to the fence goes Kima right. Going, going, going. Casey Rogowski gets the scoring going for combat with a two run blast over the right field wall. And now stepping into the box, a member of the class of 2010 Hall of Fame, Johnny McCall. Johnny Mack stands in with a two-run lead here in the top of the first. He hits it well, but not deep enough. As Left fielder Riggins there to make the catch for number two. It down. And that brings up number 52, Frank Henry. Ronald Grace, Richard Brown. Kima Wright, your outfielders. The batter McCraw, no pitch. Oh, no pitch. So no out from McCraw. Umpire had time. Stack on the left side against McCraw. He missed it. Pop up, shortstop goes back. JB Jennings makes the play. McCraw is retired for out number two. And that brings up Frank Henry. Frank Henry, the batter. Frank out of Canada. I believe our only Canadian in the conference this season. He's got good power. He's swinging the B-52 combat bat that's named after himself. Signature series. Good shot. Jennings. Missing badly with a number of pitches here in the top of the first. Henry, solid shot at the middle. That should be a double. He's running out of the box. And the throw is offline. Henry, Henry a two-out double. Brings up number four, Sal Formosa. Formosa batting two for three for this year's series. He's driven in two. for most of the batter. Henry on second, two outs. Trying to add to their 2 nothing lead here in the top of the first. Davison's pitches again are just not real close. Bouncer right side should be out of the inning for prime time. Grace at second base. The Jarvis Briggins. They get Formosa. And that will do it here in the top of the first play. Top bat. Puts up two runs on the board. Those two runs coming on one, two hits, including a two-run home run. Two up the prime time for Bryant, Davison, and Dean. Let's introduce the team combat defensive alignment as they take the field. Their pitcher is Jeff Krause, his catcher is Scott Brown. Into the infield, Casey Rogowski at first, Frank Henry at second. The third baseman is Dale Rowe, and the shortstop is Jeff Shearer McGavin. Through the outfield and left is Joey Smith. The center fielder is Sal Formosa. The right fielder is Brandon Perry, and up the middle is number 12, John Oram. These two teams have met once throughout the conference usual for a season. Prime time was the victor. 1-0 record prime time over Team Combat. And throughout the whole season, Team Combat collected one conference usual for a title, going along with two second place finishes. Thanks for the feedback. 
on the audio and video. I know we don't have a lot of people watching this one. This is early in the morning on a work day. I think uh, this should be the softball center's biggest day in its history as far as people visiting the site as we have the live feed going from 8 a.m. until at least 4.30. Might do the game in the back at 6 p.m. Our Leading on for prime time, Earl Bryant. Earl Bryant leading things Bryant, off for prime time. Bryant, on-base average of 782 throughout the season. And you heard Bryant is prime time's leading hitter. By far their best player played for uh, Gene Shop two years ago at short. Line smash deep left center field, that's not going to be caught. One hops the fence up into the scoreboard. Leading off ground rule double, double, double for Earl Bryant as his ball one hops the wall. That brings up number 25, Dennis Davison. Uh, 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 He's been batting since 23 throughout the season. Lead off double for Earl Bryant. That's a good start for prime time. Here's the pitcher, Dennis Davis. Davison, one of the, I think he led prime time in home runs. Stands in. Line smash, deep left field. That one's going to be on or over the fence, and it's up onto the hill. Davison goes the over game the wall in left field. His Davison. second round trip ticket of this year's World Series. He knocks the game up at two apiece. And that brings up Leonard Dean. Dean batting one of two for the series. Leonard Dean followed by David Moreau. Two veteran primetime players. Swung on, popped it up. Left field. Smith and left. Joey Smith on makes one. the catch. Set the defense here for you for combat. And that brings up Joey David Smith Morrow. on the left. Center field south for Mosa. Right field is oh, Brandon is Perry. During the season. The infield for you in a moment. Here's David Moreau standing in. Prime time with a 2 2 tie here in the bottom of the first. Jeff Grouse, the pitcher for combat. We have two pitchers, Derek Warren, of course, and Jeff Grouse. Grouse played with Sinister last year. Rowe is a hard line drive hitter. Definitely has stadium power as well. Takes a strike. Deep center should be caught. Formosa back pedals makes the catch. Formosa for out center number makes two. The There's Kima right. Two outs and tied up ball game for Kima right. Uh, defense for combat left to right on the infield. The veteran Dale Rowe, who most recently played with Chris Mondo, should stop Jeff McGavin from the Dan Smith days. Middle infielder is Johnny Orem from the Northwest Combat B Champs. We get the rest here in a minute. Here's Kima Wright, who you will see in the home run contest this evening. Line drive for Kima. Could have two sinking about he holds up. Wright drives the ball to left field. There's a runner on for Lee Daniels. Shot by King Ray. Now prime time will work down a lead. Here's the veteran Lee Daniels. Rest of the infield. Second base is Frank Henry. First base, Casey Rogowski. And the battery is Jeff Rouse and Scotty Brown. Here's the first pitch. Popped up on the infield, that should be out number three. Jeff McGavin calls everybody off. And there we have it, 2-2 after the first inning. McGavin makes the catch and retires the side. 
But Primetime does score two runs on three hits to the strand of one. We got a title ball game after one. Two up at the top of the second are Smith throwing off. Out to a one run lead, three to two. 
Bill for Brian Time and J.B. Jennings. Richard Brown and Ronald Grace. And let's introduce the umpires for this World Series contest. Hailing from North Carolina, down first base is Rob Mantlow. Out at second base from Florida, Dwayne Posovitz. Right, so from the land of Lincoln, Illinois, at third base, Lee Eggers. And behind home plate from yeah, Massachusetts, Mike McKinney. I think it was one thing, one. We all know what it is. What we might have to do is just put it in the bag. Stuff for prime time stands in to lead things off. Bottom of the second inning, combat leads three to two. Great play by Richard Brown. He saved a run or two. That would have been an inside the park home run actually. The ball would have rolled to the fence. So a huge play for prime time. When they get the gloves going, they can beat. They can play with anybody. Bouncer short. McGavin fields it, wheels, and throws in time to get Jennings. What a Jennings great is retired at first base. And that brings up center fielder Richard Brown. Brown bet at 593 for the season. Richard Brown, the center fielder, had just laid out for the catch. You can actually see his tracks out there. A little dive mark on the the dew on the field. Line smash over shortstop base hit for Brown. It's going to bring up the second baseman, Ronald Grace. Brown with a drive through the left side brings up Ronald Grace. Ronald Grace stands in. All five foot six, 175 pounds of them. And another grounder to short. McGavin gets the force at second. Grace with a and grounder there. Outs. Gobbled up as McGavin. He flips over to Orm. They get Brown at second base for out number two. Then that brings up the left fielder from Macon, Georgia, Jarvis Riggins. Jarvis Riggins, the left fielder, him and Grace actually were on the lineup, switched at second base and left field. They made the switch just before the game, so now Riggins on the left. Grace on first after the fielder's choice. Riggins stands in against Grouse, just inside ball one. Just inside again. 2 0. Oh. And outside. So Riggins walks on three pitches, brings up Jarvis Jarvis Sura. To bring up the top of the order and third team all conference performer, Earl Bryant. Bryant was actually in the running for the batting title, but he pulled a hamstring, missed the last two tournaments. Finished in the high 700s, but did not qualify because he didn't have enough at bats, enough plate appearances. He stands in with runners on first and second, two outs. So a big spot here for Prime Time, who is the home team. 
And now Grouse is missing the strike zone. Pitch there inside corner. Browse with a fastball at the letters and Brian pops it up. On comes Joey Smith. He almost overran it. The new Z2000 is a two-piece bat with a one-piece steel. One of the biggest elements in the Z2000 is the larger sweet spot, which gives me more power. Growing up around my dad, he always wanted to go to Slaughter, which led to a whole thing for him, and that's one of the big reasons I should be in the Last season, I just went to Slaughter for the first time in my career. I can't wait to see the all-new Z2000 this season. Get yours at Slaughter.com. Get yours at Slaughter.com. Now batting, after batting 7-11 this season, Jeff McGavin. Top of the order for combat here in the top of the third inning. They lead 3-2 after a first inning where both teams scored two. We had some great defensive plays. Jeff McGavin and Richard Brown, respectively, for their teams. And now it's 3-2 combat lead. Davison's pitch just missed. I think the problem here with Davison's pitches is the balls are not even close. So it doesn't even make the batter think. Lead off and Gavin gets his second walk of the ball game. And that brings up a second team all-conference performer this year, catcher Scott Brown. Scotty Brown stands in. Brown with a 747 average for the season. Lofty 737 on base with a bunch of home runs. Brown line smash left center field through the infield. McGavin's going to go first to third. Brown with a drive. Bring McGavin up Casey hustles Rogowski. over to third. Two on for Casey Rogowski. Rogowski ranked. Ninth in conference, U Triple S A is slugging 75 home runs throughout the season. A yeah, question on the chat: When Tyja plays? Tyja plays at 4:30. One of only two games on those back fields. Weather permitting, I hope to take the camera back there. It'll just be a stationary camera for that one, as long as it's, there's no rain in the area because there's not a lot of cover. Rogowski writes. Field deep to the fence. Kima right goes up. Going. And that Casey ball comes Rogowski, up against the helper wall. He's driven in five. Rogowski with two the homers and five RBIs. All five runs accounted for. Johnny McCraw. McCraw batted 759 for the season. On this game, or this team, Team Combat was formulated in the offseason. They they did so with left-hand power in mind. You see a lot of left-hand batters. Here's Johnny Mack. A quick walk for Johnny McCraw brings up number 52, Frank 
Henry. Henry batting 697 for the season. Frank Henry, the batter, runner on first. Nobody out here, top of the third inning. Team starting to walk through the stadium on the way to their C and women's division game. Henry goes back side fairly deep, Kima right back just onto the warning track, reaches up, makes the catch. Cross going to stroll into second. One out. Henry is retired by right and right field. McCraw over to second base. And that brings up Sal Formosa. Formosa batting 7 17 for the season. Sal Formosa, McCraw in second, Davison. Three, four pumps and the pitch line shot stabbed by the third drive, but there's third baseman Leonard Dean to make the grab. Leonard Dean fully on stretch makes a stab. For number nine, Joey Smith. Smith bet at 649 for the season. Joey Smith, the batter. Joey Smith out of Northern California. Deep shot, right field has a chance. Kima right looks up and all over, over the wall in right field. Joey Smith. Joey Smith. This one a two run blast, a five run inning for Team Combat. And that makes way for number eight, Dale Rowe. Rowe batted 632. single first time up. Combat now with an 8-2 to two lead, top of the third inning. All they're using this weekend is the Stadium ZN, as they normally use here at Disney. Field dimensions 335 and left, 385 and left center, 400 to center, 385 right center. And actually down the right field line, it's mislabeled, it's actually 320 down the right field line. It says 335 on the fence. Here's Rowe with nobody on, two outs. Inside, ball two. Line smash, base hit, right center field. Rowe with another single, here comes Johnny Orham. Two out single by Rowe brings up John Orham. Orham bet is 600 on the season. Johnny Orham played in the Cleveland Indians baseball system, minor leagues, for a number of years. Veteran softball player now won the B Worlds a few years ago with Northwest Combat. Side pitch, hammers it deep, he's got a chance, Riggins back to the warning track, makes the cut. Riggins goes back to the track and the wall to make and the catch the and retire. Combat gets Since five combat runs on the two homers, the they lead eight but to two. But put up five runs on four hits, they strand one. Go to the home half for Davison, Dean, and Morrow.
Joey Smith, as you saw with the great catch there. Two outs now, prime time. Here's David Morrow. What a catch by Joey Smith, who timed it perfectly. Smith built more like a basketball player than a softball player. Went up and got that one over the short part of the fence. What would you say the fence is out there? About six well, well, foot. The number on the left side, right. the rest of the fence is about right, eight or nine on the feet first. high. With padding all the way around. Dave Morrow walks. Kima Wright, single the first time up, stands in. Two outs, prime time, trying to get something going, but every time they do, Combat's making a defensive play. Left field line has a chance, but it's foul. And just enough distance for the home run. So now Kima Wright's in the hole with the runner on first and two outs, trailing by six. Brown is reaching into his bag of trick pitches. Now they're going to switch out the ball. Of course, it gets a little wet here. The dew is pretty thick here on in the mornings in Florida. Kima right takes the walk deep. So nice and bad there by Kima. Right draws a two on walk. And that brings up from Abdul, Georgia, the Daniels. Lee Daniels stands in, two on, two out. So prime time trying to come through with some two out goodies. Get themselves back in this game. That one's flat and inside, ball one. Swung on left field, and that one back to the fence. Joey Smith. Well, looks good. And, not coming and that back one's gone. On. A huge Rob home took run. it for Lee Daniels Lee over the Daniels. left field wall. Eight to As five. the big guy gets it over the wall, and that brings up J.D. Jennings. Jennings out of Jacksonville, Florida. J.B. Jennings, who bounced one towards the hole in the middle, and Gavin made a nice play on him there in the first. Flies out to fairly deep center field. Formosa's there, and that ends the end. Center fielder Formosa goes back to make the catch and retire the side. But for prime time, they score three runs on one hit. They strand none. They pull within three at the end of three, eight to five. Duo for combat, our Perry Grouse and McGavin. Bomber tour for combat. He 
Hagen hammers it towards second. Ronald Grace drops it, picks it up, drops it again. And Perry. Perry aboard by the air. That brings up the pitcher from New Baltimore, Michigan, Jeff Gross. Question on the chat board about do I have a list of home run derby hitters? I do have a list. Trying to make an article out of it. I'll try to have it up before the 4.30 game. List of hitters in order that you'll see starting at 6.30 tonight on ESPN3. Perry with the infield error, E4. If you're scoring at home. Jeff Grouse, the pitcher, and then the top of the order, McGavin and Scotty Brown. Grouse, base hit left field, so he rolls the top with nobody out. Perry's going to try to steal third. He's got it. Grouse with his single. Perry hustles over to third, and that brings up the man from Macomb, Michigan, Jeff. McGavin! Top of the rack, McGavin. Always a tough out. Runners on the corners. Just deep. 2-0 to McGavin. Bases here set at 75 feet. Wondering. McGavin walks to load the bases for the catcher from Andover, Minnesota, Scott Brown. Scotty Brown with a chance to separate here for combat. Big shot, bounces it past the shortstop Jennings. That's going to score two. McGavin to third, the base hit for Brown. Two on score on a single by Brown, and that brings up the first baseman from Livonia, Michigan, Casey Rogowski. Shot by Rogowski, right center field. Oh, the center fielder, Richard Brown, thought he was going to hit the wall earlier than he did. He might have hurt himself. Rogowski with a double back to the wall. That ball was high and long. by center fielder Brown. And Brown was camped under it, but just couldn't come up Again, with it. Again, it comes into score. Brown holds at third. And that brings up the additional hitter. 11 to 5 Playing now. From Charlotte, North Carolina, Johnny McCraw. Johnny Mack will be your batter after they attend to the center fielder trainer running out there. Looks like he got twisted up, had to switch which shoulder he was looking over, and then at the last second just could not come up with the catch. That's going to be a big play. Now second and third, nobody out for Johnny Mack. Come up right where the guy 
this is a or you know, maybe this is a video or don't think you're me. Billy Bob says nothing but his pride was hurt. Probably a little bit of that. Tough catch when the ball's that high. A bit of a gray sky today. Yeah, it was about 495 or 395 feet from home plate. Brown is shaking off the injury in center field. Resetting the game. There's two runners on. There's nobody out. In the top of the fourth for Johnny McCraw. Johnny Mack. Stands in. Runners on second and third. Popped it up on the infield. That's going to be out number one. Third baseman, Leonard, or uh, Lee Daniels. Leaning at third with the catch, runners oh, hold positions. There's one out now. Leonard okay. Dean at third, Lee Daniels at first. Frank Henry is going to get shot. Now second baseman from Quebec, Canada, Frank Henry. Cooper giving the umpire a hard time now. Bobby Knifong, the legend, comes in. Bobby Knifong used to pitch on the major level. Teams like converters. <laughs> As the umpire walks away, he does a little fake dirt kick. Bobby. Bobby's a funny guy. So. Coop. Coop's being vocal down there. I don't know if you can hear that at home. Here's Frank Henry with two on, one out. And that one's deep. And a line smash to the big hole in center field. That should score two. Richard Brown throws it in. And Rogowski Brian scores. Brian Henry with a single as Brown and Rogowski come in to score. There's one duck on the pond for center fielder, Sal Formosa. Formosa, another hit. Henry's going to try first to third. No, he's going to hold up. Good choice. Formosa, the Long Beach, California product, drives so the ball to left field. Hit Henry now first to second, second, one out, and a 13 to 5 lead the for the combat. Fielder. From Mount View, California, Joey Smith. Joey Smith stands in. Joey with that huge home run robbing catch in left field earlier in the game. It's been mostly combat ever since. Two on. Now 2-0 pitch to Smith. I give him the green light if he gets his pitch. Oh, outside ball three. He's going to walk. Smith draws a walk to load the bases for third baseman Dale Rowe. Dale Rowe, the veteran. 
stands in. I've seen Dale Rowe injure two first base umpires in his career with line drives. So this guy at first had better move back a little bit. Set, bases are loaded, one out. Fly ball center field. Shard Brown makes the catch. Brown in center grabs the sack fly by Rowe. Henry comes in to score. There's now two outs. For John Orham. Orham of Olympia, Washington. Johnny Orham, the batter, two on, two out, 14 to five lead for combat here in the top of the fourth. They've completed six runs. Orham tries the right field California chop and he got it to fall in. That's gonna be an RBI double. And it's 15 to five. Orham with a double for Mosa scores. Smith holds at third. Now the top, now the man who started the inning. Brandon Perry. That's a good intro song. Brandon Perry stands in. Fly ball, right field, Kima rates under. That's going to end the inning. Combat right seven runs run comes in, makes the catch, and retires the side. But for Team Combat, they do post seven runs up on the board on six hits. They strand two. We go to the home half of the floor for Brown, Grace, and Riggins. Now back for prime time, their center fielder from Atlanta, Georgia, Rashard Brown. Bottom three in the order here for prime time. Richard Brown, Ryan Grace, Jarvis Riggins. Hit right behind the plate. Hit right behind the plate. Rouse not happy now with the strike zone. Both teams working the umpires, which is a major team trait. of the major team. Inside, Riggins or Jarvis. Third round, sorry. Brown with a double brings up the second baseman from Byron, Georgia, Ronald Grace. Char Brown with the doubles, good start. Here's Ronald Grace, Peanut they call him, or Nut, I think. Prime time, a B team out of Georgia. Taking on Combat, they have beat Combat before. Bouncer to short, McGavin wheels and throws in time. McGavin over to first and they get Grace for out number one. 
And that brings up the left fielder, Jarvis Riggins. Better in the order, Riggins. One out, runner on second. Earl Bryant on deck. Top of the order coming. Grouse with three, four pumps. And a liner right back at Grouse up the middle base hit. That's going to score one. Riggins will rip yeah. up the middle. Brown comes in to score. And now for prime time, the top of their order. And middle infielder from Atlanta, Georgia, Earl Bryant. Earl Bryant, the leadoff man for prime time. He's due to unleash one here. Runner on first, one out. Trailing by nine. They're all elimination games this morning, brought to you by EvilSports.com here in South Falls Center. We'll be live until that 4.30 p.m. game on the backfield. We're going to try to do that one as well. USA Live takes over at 4.30 here at the stadium with the winner's bracket semifinal. Bouncer to a deep shortstop throw to second. He's safe. Oh, he's out. Unfortunately, we don't have replay Riggins here like that was base. Say, but I'm going to say he was... Brian with a fielder's choice, and that brings up Dennis Davison. The players have done a, a real good job in this major tournament. Might have missed one there. Jeff McGavin was playing a shallow left field. I mean, probably about the deepest shortstop we've seen all week. And he had a long throw to second. Home agrees that he was in there. Here is Dennis Davison who had the two run homer in the first. And line shot between short and third base hit. It's going to bring Earl Bryant, who grounded into the fielder's choice, over to third. Davison so now with a first single, third. Bryant over to third. Leonard Dean. And that brings up third baseman from Great Georgia, Leonard Dean. You know what? Let's go. Can you get just third and first? Like on this one. Just so I can see the pitch a little bit. Leonard Dean, runners on the corners, two outs, big spot here for prime time. Bouncer to short, McGavin fields, throws to second, in time for the out. McGavin again, picks up the grounder, they get Davison at second, and that'll do it, but for prime time, they do get one run. On three hits, they strand two. They play through four, it's a nine run ball game, slanted towards compact. Two up in the top of the fifth. Gross, McGavin and Brown. In the nation, we can't make every annoying thing disappear. But we can eliminate deductibles. Nationwide insurance members who add vanishing deductibles get $100 off for every year of safe driving. Join the nation when deductibles go Nationwide is on your side. You SSA members, you could save money on your auto insurance. Call a local nationwide agent or 1 866 556 save.
Kyle Bailey, Davis Bordello. Bill from Tampa, Florida walks down to first base. And on the top of the order, shortstop from Macomb, Michigan, Jeff McGavin. McGavin with three play appearances and three walks. Part of the crew that has the tripod in that back booth and then down there? Well, no, that's the U triple SA in the yeah. next room over. Oh. We'll work in the next room. What do you need though? I need it out. <laughs> out of where? <laughs> Out of the camera bay. Yeah, because I, can you just set it? Well, like move it. It's until no? twelve, and I'm not allowed to touch their stuff. Uh, just because I don't want them touching my stuff uh, once I set it up. So I they're not gonna get here good. till four thirty, I think. Or that for, for their first games at four thirty, so they probably won't get here till three thirty. Okay. McGavin is retired by right. Oh, thank there's, you. There's is one there another place? I mean, I don't mind stopped. moving it just like a few feet out of the way. But you're saying down there in the dugout? Beside the dugout? Yeah, beside the dugout where the cameras, the, the camera spot is. Right. At like noon, I get my camera guys in here because we're shooting the home run derby for right. ESPN3 right. and, the, and the 930 game. Yeah. So I need them out of there do you s and out of there. Do you see the guy in the blue sitting down here? Yeah. Uh, he's with you, Triple SA, and he's with their camera crew sometimes. He does some announcing for them. Okay. He's got the blue wow. with the red hat bill. Left field yeah. by if you want to talk to him, he might be able to call someone or do it himself to move it. Okay. 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 Right. His, his, his name is Rick Roberts. Six. Well, thank you. All right. Yeah, this is our only camera. We're just a low budget uh, group. <laughs> no, no, we. <laughs> We understand it's just right. our camera guy, we don't want to touch their stuff. Right. They later don't go like, oh, I hear you. tripod's broken, this right. is broken. I hear you. I think Rick will move it for you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Right in right field makes the catch and down goes combat as they strand one on no hits. We're now going to the back, home half of the zero. for moral right to the yes, we have three camera guys coming in. Trying to move the U triple SA equipment. How to deal with that? What's up, guys? I'm Brandon Blake from Team Mizuno. I'm introducing the new Mizuno Blackout. Very durable, reliable. It's going to last you a very long time. It's one of the best performing bats out in the game. When I step up to the plate and I have the Blackout in my hand, I have tremendous confidence. Got incredible pops, clear feeling. The Mizuno Blackout comes in at 26 and a half, 27 and a half, 28 and a half. That extra half ounce gives me tremendous feel when I step up to the batting box. The Mizuno Blackout's $175. You can't beat the value, so go pick up the Mizuno Blackout today. Nothing sweet like a Mizuno. Solid smash left center. He's got a double. Bring up Kima right. Whoa, what a double to the gap in left center field. And that brings up Kima right. Right with a single in the first. Q 
Team all right, stands in, runner on second. This is prime time's chance here in the bottom of the fifth. Bouncer to second, knocked down by Henry. Throw to first, save. Henry actually did a nice job to keep that in front of him and have it play on it. Moro holds at second, Hard right shot. aboard on the air. And that brings up first baseman Lee Daniels. Daniels with a three-run homer in the third. Just to set the schedule here for you today, Softball Center will take you through to 4.30 p.m. this afternoon. Winners bracket semifinal will be on UCAA Live, and then ESPN3 takes over at 6 o'clock for the Colorado Derby. And winners bracket semifinal. Prime time. Questioning the strike zone here. Some more questions about the home run derby tonight. Basically, the top 16 hitters in the conference get a bye from the first round, and then one hitter from each of the 16 teams, that's 16 more, and then eight at large uh, berths, if you will. Guys like Jeff Hall, Bryson Baker that have won it before. Line drive center field by Lee Daniels, going to score a one. And now the Kima Wright fell down. But the cutoff went to second Lee base. Lee Daniels with a rip. And Morrow comes in to score. Came a right over to third. There's two ducks on the pond for J.B. Jennings. So J.B. Jennings with runners on the corners just to finish up. So those 24 hitters will hit in the first round and the top four will go on to hit with the top 16 hitters in the country. Line out to McGavin in the final. McGavin there to get the line drive. Grabs out number one. And that brings up Richard doing the ESPN game. Bernie is going to go fly out and do a college two football game. game. And actually, DW will be doing the UCAA live announcing on Saturday. At least that's what I hear. Maybe Rick Roberts. Let's go, let's go. Come on, JB Jennings, rounder to short. McGavin backhands, throws to second. Gets the out. And my players mixed up again. That was Richard Brown. The ground out, fielder's choice. So now two outs, bottom of the fifth. Brown right time down, down 15 7. Right comes in to score. And that brings up number four, Ronald Grace. Race prime time is going to have to get some hits with two outs to climb back into this game. Two runs in in the inning. Grouse delivers just deep. And now bouncer to short. McGavin fields it again, gets the fielder's choice at second. McGavin don't worry time gets get two. Brown at second base. It's 15 to 8. We go to the top of the six. Combat the coming up. Fit, but they do score two runs on two hits. Nice grand one. Question if the bats are tested for the home run. Six are McCraw, Henry, and Formosa. That would be a big no. We all want to show. No one wants to test. Who wants to test a bet? My wife too. DJ
top of the sixth inning combat. We're in the white shirts, gray pants. They're going to be batting here. They lead 15 to 8. Johnny Mack, Frank Henry, and Sal Formosa. I'm going to say Formosa maybe forgot his white jersey. It looks like he's swimming in that 70. Number 26, Johnny. Let's say Pagan. Sal Formosa, the smallest guy on the team, is wearing Hector Pagan's shirt. Hector Pagan's the big coach down there in the blue. Wouldn't even be able to play with a shirt that big. On 72 is the guy in the blue. His shirt. Johnny Mack fouled it off. Now he takes a flat and inside pitch. Hard shot foul, and he's going to strike out. Two fouls. Bert Claus retired on strikes, and that brings up Frank Henry. Henry two for three in the game. Combat still not quite on it offensively. Defensively, they look pretty good. That play by Smith, and uh, you know, five or six plays by the shortstop Jeff McGavin. Henry's going to try to get something started. Frank made two holes went for his foot. Did you see that? A deeper one and a one up front. Uh, move. Now 2-0 to Frank. And he takes a strike. Frank Henry played on the Canadian national team that played in the border battle. And he takes ball three for the walk. Henry with a one -on walk. Brings up center fielder Sal Formosa. Sal Formosa, the batter. Formosa, one out, runner on first. Line smash between the middle and shortstop. Space hit, Frank Henry running good. He's in at third. Formosa with a double. Brings up Joey Smith. Formosa with a double. Henry over to third. And that brings up Joey Smith. Single 
Melvin Mike Dill, Dill the Matter. In this year's World Series, Dill with one home run, he's driven in two. Mike Dill stands in, Dill line to line, and he has good power. Inside, he hits it left center field about 370. He's going to be out. Out number three. Combat gets two. They lead 17 to 8. Dill is retired in left field. There's, and that'll do it. And now looking into the home half of the Re-entering the play up the middle is John Orham. Orham re-entering the game. Greg Nell, team one. DJ Folk, team one. My weapon of choice is DJ Folk Wing. Leading off, number two, left fielder, Jarvis Rickens. down the right field line. It's going to be extra bases. And they missed the cutoff, so an inside the park homer or possibly a triple in the air. gets all the way around. A triple and he comes home on the air on the throw. And now the top of the order for prime time, and Earl Bryant. Regardless, it's a good start for prime time. They get a run on the board here in the bottom of the sixth. They trail 17 to eight. Top of the order, Earl Bryant. Fly to left, just in front of the warning track. Joey Smith makes the catch. One out. Bryant is retired in left field by Smith. There's one out now for Dennis Davison. Davison two for three in the game, including a two-run homer. Davis in the batter, nobody on, one out, prime time trailing by eight. They're down to their last five outs. Both teams working the umpire on the strike zone. 
Mets defense has been just a little bit better. And they've shown a little bit more power here in the prime time to get their eight run lead. Davison hits a flat pitch inside. Dale Rowe makes the play and a throw in time to first. Rowe at third gobbles up the grounder by Davison. Probably Davis. Dale He's Rowe's first outs. play in the infield. For number one, the two runners. years. Third baseman Frank Pinch yielding to here. Eddie Conover, Conover the batter. I was told that it's 745. Oh, shut down for the rest of the year. Oh. Some chat about Neil Haglin on that board about the home run contest tonight. Neil, Neil put on a show here last year. He made it a couple of rounds. Some long bombs. There's a pop up by Eddie Cano. Connor lifts the ball high to center field with the ball since they have made the catch and retire the side. So, we'll probably get one run seven. on one hit. They strand none. And we DW's going to go get some pictures. 17 to 9, the combat lead. Do you want our Perry, Gross, and McGavin? the chat room. It's 17 and 9 combat leads prime time going to the seventh inning. I'm going to go take some pictures of this game. Looks like it's about over. Next game is Taylor May. West Coast Dorflinger and Taylor Maid is next. I'll be right back. Enjoy. Number six, Brandon Perry. First baseman Daniel gets the grounder by Perry for out number one. And that brings up number three, Jeff Grouse. Cross this ball to left. Wiggins is there to make the catch. Two outs now for number one, Jeff McGavin. Brings up catcher Scott Brown.
Brown is retiring and left by Riggins, and that'll do it here in the top of the seventh. Fourth combat they strand one on one hit, they score none. Two up and a bottom of the seventh are more lights and Daniels. Greg Canel, Team 1. My weapon of choice, 454 with my gun. This legit. Starting off the home half for prime time, David Morrow. Morrow with two runs scored and a double on the fifth. Off man aboard and Morrow. And that brings up Kamo right. Okay, I'm to say there's not much talent among any of us. <laughs> Right aboard on the fielder's choice as Morrow is retired at first. There's one out now for the big guy, number 14, Lee Daniels. Daniels lifts the ball to left and Smith is there to make the second out. That brings up J.B. Jennings.
James drives the ball to left, and Smith is there to make the catch and retire prime time. Congratulations, prime time, for appearing in the World Series. They will conclude their work here. How about a round of applause for their appearance? Advancing in this tournament is Team Combat. They will play today at 4.30 on field number four against Tyja. Thank you. 